All right. So we've been talking a lot about how to go to the doctor's office. Right? We've been learning new words, new ideas, some listening practice, what we might hear on the phone or in the doctor's office. So we're going to review the new vocabulary we learned last video. And I think if you just listen to me and think in your head what word means what, that will be a good review. I can't do much else over a YouTube video. All right, so first off, we're learning these words in English because it's useful. But when you make a doctor's appointment, you are always allowed to ask for an interpreter or a translator in the doctor's office, right? You are always allowed to ask for an interpreter or translator for your first language. So, we learned the word doctor, nurse, receptionist, waiting room, exam room, to make an appointment. We also talked about to schedule an appointment. And we also learned what's wrong, right? Tell me what's wrong. Very good. Okay, so we're going to talk about new patient information, right? If you've never been to the doctor's office before, maybe they don't know you. Filling out, right? Being able to write out or in some cases type your new patient information helps them know you and it helps them help you better. So we talked about last video, first name last name. We might ask you to spell it, right? What letters? Date of birth, right? Your birthday, month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. Your phone number, including the area code. Your address, your street address, where you live, where can they send you mail? A lot of times this has to do with billing, paying money, right? Then Again, being able to describe what's wrong. Do you have your medical insurance card? Again, with the billing, this helps. Any known allergies? Anything that you know you are allergic to? Known allergies. And your medical history. Your medical history. So we'll talk about more of these more in depth in this video. So first we'll talk about your phone number and your address or addresses. So your address or your street address is where you live, where they can send you mail. So we say first our house number, house or apartment building number, the street name, the name of the street you live on. And then if you live in an apartment, the apartment number. Next, the town or city where you live. The state where the town or city is. Usually we use the state abbreviation, which is two capital letters, or capital, maybe one lowercase, I think they changed it. So two letters for the state if you want, or you could write it all out. And then your zip code, right? That's usually a five, five numbers. So example, our address, this is a made up address, it's not real. Right, 9292 West Park Road, apartment 102. Right, so that's the house number. 292, 292 West Park Road is our street name. Then apartment number 102, 102. Town or city? We live in Allentown, let's pretend. Allentown, Pennsylvania, right? So Pennsylvania is a big word. It's a very long state name. Pennsylvania. We could also just say PA. That is our state abbreviation. Allentown PA 18103. That's our zip code, right? So that's how we would say our address. They also might ask for your email address, right? Maybe you can say my email address, or you would probably be writing this down. So you write English please at, that's what this symbol means, at gmail dot Com, right at gmail.com or at yahoo.com right or dot org um, yeah so you also might hear someone say are there any capital letters right we know there are capital and lowercase letters and so right caps or no caps capital letters or no capital letters 
right? And I should have erased my whiteboard, right? So, because they don't want to send an email to the wrong person, that would not be good, right? So, capital letters or, right? So, capital letters, lowercase letters. So, caps, no caps. You might even say, my email address is English, please. 292 at gmail.com no caps and they'll know that means no capital letters right so that's also a good little phrase to know you might hear it no caps and then again with your phone number you want with the area code for us in Pennsylvania it's either 717 or 223 at least our area of Pennsylvania and then make sure that you give them your number not your sister's number, not your mother's number, not your boss's number, your number. They need to be able to call you. If they tell the information to the wrong person, they can get in trouble, okay? So make sure you give them your number. All right. So all this together is called your contact information, right? How do they contact you? How do they call you, right? So contact information. So how do they call you? How do they send you mail? How do they get in contact, right? So that's your address, email address, and phone number. Your contact information, well, also your name. So your contact information is your name, your address, your email address, and your phone number, okay? So moving on, we'll talk about more things in the new patient information. So we're going to talk about any known allergies and any medical history that the doctor needs to know medical history so first of all we'll talk about allergies allergies right i have an allergy to cats you can also say i am allergic to cats right an allergy is when your body does not react well to something right maybe i eat eat a strawberry and I start feeling oh, itchy. My body does not like the strawberry. My body, right, is confused. It thinks the strawberry is bad for me. So, now we talked about symptoms, right? Things that are wrong with your body. So symptoms of having an allergic reaction, symptoms of, ha of having an allergic reaction include, right, we talked about itching, trouble breathing, Right, we talked about that when we talked about COVID symptoms, right? <sighs> right, breathe in. Breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> trouble breathing means, <sighs> right, trouble breathing. And then, <sighs> right, it might sound bad. Trouble breathing. Sneezing, next, sneezing, right? Ah, achoo, achoo, right? Coughing is, <coughs> sneezing, achoo. Bless you, right? Sneezing. Runny nose. You can, right, here's our nose, looking runny nose, yucky, right, dirty. Headache, right, we talked about headache, you should know that. Red or watery eyes, right, so this is an allergy symptom, right, it's, oh, your eyes are itchy, right, it's almost like your eyes are itchy and you just can't make them feel better and they just are terrible, right, red, wet, red, blah, blah. red or watery eyes. Next is hives or a rash, and we'll talk about rash in a moment. So these are some allergy symptoms. Some are more serious than others. So, right, a rash could look like this. It looks like bumps. They're really itchy. They're no fun. A rash. So, right, itchy, red, bumps, hives. Uh, this is like some of your skin is red, some of your skin is not. Um, it might look different depending on what color your skin is. So uh, we call it like splotches, right? Little patches on your skin. So next we want to talk about swelling, right? An allergic reaction, having an allergy could cause swelling. So this is a normal face. This is a swollen face, right? It means it gets puffy, big. This is a normal foot. This is a swollen foot, right? So puffy, it gets bigger, swollen, right? I am swelling, I am swollen, right? My foot is swollen. It's not good. So, swelling is not good. Swelling is very dangerous, right? Because if you have swelling in your neck, 
you may start to have trouble breathing. You may start to have trouble breathing. If you do not take care of the swelling, you will stop breathing, and that is not good. You need to keep breathing to stay alive, okay? So swelling is very serious. So especially if you have swelling inside your neck, you may not be able to see it. So you need to pay attention to how you feel. So, right, and so here's an illustration of breathing, right? Breathe in, and then this cat is breathing out. Breathe in, breathe out, right? So I am breathing. I am breathing in, breathing out. Right, so that's good practice. So there are some common allergies. You can have food allergies, like to nuts or seafood, allergies to berries or eggs. You can also be allergic to pets. You can be allergic to plants. So, but what your doctors especially need to know. People can be allergic to types of drugs and medicine. So if you know you're allergic to drugs or medicine, you need to tell your doctor the name, okay? So tell your doctor or your nurse or the receptionist the name or names of drugs and medicine that you cannot have, right? Because if they do not know this, they may accidentally give you this drug and then they might get in trouble. Right? They do not want to hurt you. They want to give you the right drugs. So make sure you know the ones you cannot have and tell your doctors. Good, okay. Um, your medical history. Right? History means in the past. We talk a lot about today, tomorrow, yesterday. Yesterday was in the past. So your doctor's office should know everything you remember about your medical history. Right? helps you helps the doctors know about your health in the past. So this includes allergies, right? But it also includes any shots and vaccines that you remember like oh I got two covid shots, I got the flu shot, I have the chicken pox shot. Right? This also is called immunizations. That's a big word. Immunizations, right? It means I am immune. I cannot get sick from this anymore ideally, right? Immunization history. So shots and vaccines. So if you see immunizations, that's what that means. Your doctor needs to know any surgeries you have had, any surgeries, right? When they cut you open and fix you up and put you back together. Like if you have a new hip, your doctor needs to know that because they might try and give you a medicine that does not work because of certain surgeries you've had. So they may try and put you in a magnetic machine, right? That's no good. So they need to know your surgeries. They also need to know any medical conditions, right? A medical condition. So a condition is like a sickness that you have had for a long time, a long time, and it might not go away. Like long COVID might be a condition. Common ones are diabetes, right? When your blood sugar is you can't regulate your blood sugar, um, or asthma, right? Having asthma, trouble breathing, right? So medical conditions. So uh, technically a medical condition could be, I can't see without my glasses, right? Can't see. It's kind of a medical condition. So being able to tell them that. They also will ask about your lifestyle, right? Are you active or inactive, right? So this helps them know how much medicine to give you, right? So someone who is inactive, maybe obese, a bigger person, they might need more medicine than a small person. So that isn't always how it works, but just for example. So they also need to know your diet, right? Your nutrition, if you eat lots of healthy food, lots of unhealthy food, an even amount of both, right? So this helps them understand you and how to make you healthy. So, we also are going to talk about substances. Your doctor will ask you, do you use any drugs or alcohol, right? Drugs or alcohol. So, right, so tobacco, uh, different kinds of drugs, alcohol. So, 
drugs, alcohol, and tobacco. Right, so substances are something that you ingest or take. It changes what you think in your head a lot of times, but it is not food. Okay? So, so is it important to tell your doctor the truth? Right? Maybe you don't want to tell your doctor. Maybe you don't want to say, Doctor, I drink four bottles of whiskey a week. I drink four entire bottles, right? Because maybe you're embarrassed. It is important to tell your doctor the truth. I will tell you that straight up, um, right? Your doctor is not going to judge you and say, oh, you shouldn't drink that. I mean, they might say you shouldn't drink that much, but it's important, right? We're going to talk about why. It is important to tell your doctor the truth because if they assign you a medicine and so the doctor might assign you a medicine that does not mix, that does not mix well with alcohol or that does not work if you've taken, if you've smoked weed, right? So you need to tell your doctors because otherwise they might assign you a medicine that makes you worse. This is very serious. You could get even more sick. You could die. They could get in a lot of trouble. So always tell them the truth, okay? They are trying to help you. Reviewing the patient information then on that on that note. First name, last name, know how to spell it. Date of birth, which is your birthday. Phone number, how they can call you with the area code. Your street address, your email address, and your, well, we talked about phone numbers, so your contact information. Being able to tell them what's wrong. Your medical insurance allergies that you know about, and your medical history. Okay, so that is new patient information.